so we've got here Andrea by the uh, Sunrays, which came out, I believe, in December of 65, maybe early 66, somewhere around there. Um, basically, Murray Wilson's, like, get back, like, get back at the Beach Boys project. Uh, he was trying to uh, show the Beach Boys that the music they previously were doing was still hip. I mean, heck. Look at, look at, you know, I mean, I mean, you'd think it's pretty obvious that they're, you know, uh, but he, they do mention on the liner notes that, uh, Murray Wilson, father of, uh, you know, Dennis Colin Bryan, uh, is, um, uh, is the producer here and was technically their manager as well. Yeah, he was, uh, they had two... Oh, and Chuck Bridges, the engineer, too. So, you know, it's got Beach Boys written all over it, just without the Beach Boys. Um, so, let's see, um, produced by Murray Wilson and Don, I think, Ralkie is how you pronounce it. Um, but there's three hits on here, and only two of them really, really did much, because... The big one on here was Andrea, which got to number 41. Then there was I Live for the Sun, which was really the big get back at the Beach Boys thing with Murray. Uh, that's the one that he, I think he played for Brian and everybody, and they were like, this is what you should make still. You shouldn't be making, you know, I think by that time they were doing, I think it was after Summer Days, and they were, uh, you know, like getting into the other more experimental stuff. Well, it might have been around the time of Summer Days, or maybe shortly before it, and they just had done today. Somewhere in that time period, Murray had played them I Live for the Sun and saying, you guys should still make this music. Um, which technically they would go on to do that with Summer Days, but not fully. So he was you know, trying to make a point and just didn't work because then we got Pet Sounds. Um, which, you know. But this really is not like what Murray wanted the Beach Boys to continue doing. This is not really that at all. Um, the other hit on here was Still, which came out after the album came out, I'm pretty sure. Got to number 93, I think. Um, you Don't Phase Me. If people say it's a hit, and I really don't think it did much, maybe. I don't even know if it was put out as a single. Um, but uh, I'm just going to go to the tracks, uh, the guys here, uh, this one is, uh, Byron Case, he plays guitar, uh, Martin, or Marty D. Giovanni, as we call him, or we just, M Marty, Marty D. Giovanni, uh, and we've got, uh, Vince Hozier, who plays bass, Eddie Medora, who plays guitar, and Rick Hen, who's the drummer and the main singer. There's a couple of songs sung by, uh, some of the other guys, and they put them all on side two, which was kind of stupid. But getting into the uh, the songs, uh, Andrea uh, opens up the album, uh, the big hit, of course. Um, it's a great song, you know, it's kind of got that uh, Beach Boys kind of harmony going on, the whole album does, really. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's just really, really uh, great. Um, I love Rick Hen, uh, Rick's vocal in it, Rick Hen's vocal in it, uh, really amazing song, though, uh, written by Rick as well, um, and then we come to the, probably the, the, uh, the one that's, the, that's a stupid track, not the one that's anybody's favorite, probably everybody's least favorite, A Little Dog and His Boy, which was, again, written by Rick, Rick singing about, Rick singing, being a dog, and having a owner, and, like, the owner's about to go to college or something like that. I forgot the whole storyline. Uh, but that's the main gist. And it's like, my name is Spot. I am a dog. It's really stupid. But it's fun, you know? Uh, next we come to one of my favorite tracks on the album. Have to Be Myself, uh, again sung by Rick. Um... Really, really amazing uh, song here. Great use of, uh, I think, uh, yeah, there's horns in this one, uh, and the horns are great in it. Um, 
you know, I really enjoy those horns. Uh, and Rick's vocal in it, like, it, it's one of his, uh, one of his best vocals. He's got a real nice edge to his voice on that one. He also does some pretty good falsetto because Marty was the main falsetto guy, but Rick does, I'm, uh, does the falsetto on this one and just pretty good. Next we come to, I think, my favorite track on the album, I Look Baby I Can't See. Uh, the opening is really like, like, it goes like, ba do be do be do ba do be do be do ba do be do be and then the falsetto kicks in. It's an amazing little thing. Uh, I really love that. That was put out as a single sometime after the album came out. I think about five or six months after the album came out. Didn't do anything. Really should have. Uh, it's a great song, and the chorus part um, that Rick does on this is really, really great. Um, next, we've got You Don't Phase Me, which is mostly sung by Rick with, I think, a little bit of a co-lead by Marty. He sings a few lines here and there. Um, but uh, this is really more like the uh, Andrea type of song. Uh, it's kind of along the lines of Andrea in a way. Um, but, see, I'm trying to pick which one I like better. I think I like You Don't Phase Me a little bit more. Um, great vocal in it. Great harmonies, of course. Great harmonies on the whole album, but that one really stands out to me. Um, so, yeah, great song. Next, we come to Still, like I said, which was released as a single after the album. I'm pretty, yeah, after the album. And didn't do anything. It got to number 93. Which, you know, is kind of good. But compared to the two hits they had before, Andrea and I Live for the Sun, Andrea f f getting to 41, and uh, I Live for the Sun, pretty sure getting to 51. Um, 51 or 52, pretty sure 51. Going to 93 after that is really not a great achievement. Um, they didn't last too long, and they really should have, because they're not really like the Beach Boys besides their harmonies and their looks. And they really only stayed like this for a little while. I mean, they go from this to this, you know, um, but they should have lasted longer, but still, uh, great vocal, uh, from Rick, great harmonies, I really love the harmonies in that one, and Rick does a little bit of a spoken bit, which, you know, he really gets the point across, uh, Rick is an am amazing vocalist, great drummer, too, um, next, we open up side two with I Live for the Sun, which was, again, written by Rick, uh, it's an amazing, uh, I don't know, he, um, he really did great with that. Uh, it's very hard to put that song into words because it's such a good song. Uh, and Rick's vocal on it might be his best, if not, it's definitely in his top five. Um, just has such a nice feeling to it and the harmonies in it are great. Uh, great drums, you know, great guitar, everything about it is just speaks summer and, you know, fun. Uh, which is really the only song that completely does that on the album. Uh, that kind of sets everything that's kind of different from everything else on the album. Uh, next, we finally get a different lead vocalist. Uh, we get Joanne, written and sung by uh, Eddie Medora, who was the uh, the lead guitar player. Um, and uh, he was very good at, uh, you know, he was, uh, whoa, let me backtrack a second. Um, this was written about his girlfriend, uh, who then became his wife until he died in 2006. 2000, yeah. Um, and his vocal on this is, he doesn't have many vocals, but I think this is his best one. I think he's got maybe four, three or four here or there. Uh, but this is, I think, definitely his best one. Great songwriting, too, there. Uh, he does really, really great with that, and, uh, he should have done a lot more. Next, we've got Better Be Good To Me. We come back to Rick now. Um, and, uh, he, a very relaxed feeling to the song. Uh, very nice, mellow song, but it definitely is one of my favorites by them. Um, it just goes, it just flows so nicely, you know, it's just an amazing little song. Uh, Bye Baby Bye, which was the B-side to I Live For The Sun. Uh, sung by, uh, Marty Di Giovanni, I think, it's not his only vocal, he's got a couple others, but, uh, he does, he really should have gotten more, because he's that kind of guy that was really, really good with those, like, really nice ballads, and he was, he does really good on this song, and they should have let him sing more, um, I, I think he, he could have done still 
maybe. I mean, Rick does it great, or, you know, sings it, you know, just amazing. Uh, but still, I think Marty could have done that maybe a little bit better. Just, just my opinion. I mean, you know, because Rick does get a lot of the, vo most of the vocals on here. But Bye Baby Bye, uh, written by Murray. But it, it's really doesn't speak Murray that much. Um, but, you know, next we've got another Eddie song, uh, Tears in My Eyes, which was, again, written and sung by him. Uh, the solo, we don't get a lot of really guitar solos from these guys, uh, and Eddie's solo in this really shines through and is a really great solo, and you think by the title, uh, Tears in My Eyes, it's gonna be kind of like a downer, like a ballad, but it's really not, it's a great little upbeat uh, kind of number, little, it's an amazing song, well, again, you know, Eddie should have gotten to do more in the group, uh, Since My Finding You, which is, like I said, probably one of the best closing tracks an album could have, uh, it's got kind of like a soul kind of feel, like, like surf, rhythm and blues and soul kind of all, you know, just kind of mashed together in a way, but it works, you know, uh, Rick's vocal on it is, like, a, again, one of his best vocals, uh, I like, I love the chorus, and it's just the harmonies on the, I let myself go hungry, the, the harmonies on that part just amaze me, it's an amazing song, again, they should have gotten more like that, and they should have put that out as a single, I think it would have done really great, um, so, well, there's your 12-track, uh, you know, review for the Fantastic Sunrays with Andrea. Uh, featuring I Live for the Sun and You Don't Faze Me. Get one more look at these Beach Boys ripoffs. But, uh, like, again, they're not really like the Beach Boys, and, I mean, Murray kind of used them for that. But, uh, they really should have lasted longer because they're a great group with a lot of talent. Uh, me and a friend have started a Facebook group for them. Uh, and just, if you just look up the Sun Rays I Live for the Sun on Facebook, it should be there. There'll be a picture of them. I, I doubt it'll be that hard if I'm the only one. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you want to, you know, come and, you know, uh, join it and just, you know, just learn some more about them. So, that's all I've got for today. Uh, so, we'll see you soon.